Hey, what's going on guys? Andy Pride here, back with Milk and Cookies Total War. And today we're going to be working on a kind of experiment of a commentary here. Not exactly sure how this is going to go, but we will see. I have two guest commentators on, Boss Tycoon and Braver Planar. Please introduce yourselves. I'm Boss. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> wow, really good intro. Alright, so uh, today I wanted to talk about... Well, some of our subscribers have been telling us that they want to hear about some of the tactics that we use when we play in our games, want to go over some strategies, some low-level and high-level stuff. And that is one thing that when we started out this channel, we kind of wanted to focus on. And lately, we've kind of been doing it more from an entertainment perspective. So we kind of want to go back to our roots a little bit and start doing more of the strategy aspect and help you guys out, the new players or experienced players out there who want some more uh, strategies to help them win some games. So what I wanted to focus on today was I want to start out going over my army setup, some of the strategies that I use when I go into a battle, uh, match made or tournament game. And then after that, we're going to focus, really the point of this commentary is going to be how a lower ranking player can be a higher ranking player who has a stronger quote unquote army setup than they do. So we're going to go over my army setup real quick and I'm just going to talk about what I do when I get in a tournament game. Uh, my army setup consists of two matchlocks up front. I normally bring two 125 range matchlocks. For those of you who don't know, a normal matchlock starts out with 100 range, and that is uh, outshone by all bow, un bow units in the game. But if you upgrade it to 125 on a matchlock warrior monk, and then add the extended range, they can get 150, which means that on a flat surface they are really powerful and have a really long range. So 125 range matchlocks are a really powerful unit that you should try to get uh, if you can. They, uh, you do need to have a level 5 matchlock to get them to that point, but they are very good, especially on flat maps. What I do to back them up is, as you can see, I have a Yari Ashigaru behind it. So what I do is I try to win the matchlock fight out front, obviously. The 125 range helps me do that. If my opponent does not, I will get the first volley off. And so once the matchlock fight is over, my opponent will charge at me, and then I have Yari Ashigaru backing up my matchlocks, and then I'll spear wall with them, and then send in my units. So I have three, four sword units, heavy, heavily veteran sword units, uh, 23 attack, 21 attack sword units, and I usually do a mix of Nodachis and Katanas. I think that's a good mix. Nodachis are a great unit, and as you can see uh, on Braver's side, Nodachis are actually really good for newer players because they have the benefit of having bonsai which allows them to not route and that's huge for a newer player because you have worse morale so if you can use a uh, unit that has bonsai they won't be able to route and they'll be able to stand in the fight much longer and so i think nodachis are an absolutely great unit for that as you can see i also have some yari cav in the back some 19 attack 16 attack and then some light cav as well rounding it out and some naginata attendant meat shields up front so what does my unit or my army setup do really well it has the 125 range matchlocks, which are very devastating units, especially on flat maps. And it has four highly upgraded sword units, which means that in a confined space, my swords will be able to tear up an army like Braver's. What Braver does, though, is that he has a army that will spread out all over the field and he'll try to surround me. So I want to hear what Boss and Braver would do in a situation like this. You come up against an army like mine, you're a lower rank, like a five or six star I'm maybe even 7 star, it doesn't really matter, just lower rank than a 10 star. What would you do against an army like mine? Graded. Kill it. Well, yes, that's good. But let's talk about some strategies, some specific strategies that you guys would do. Concede, defeat. It's over, there's no hope. Yeah. Alright, but for real. Okay, <clears throat> um, well, Braver, like, just the way he's set up, like, he's already set up in a surrounding area. And, like, if you advance, on just one flank, he'll pull back and he'll hit you with another flank, like with a matchlock fire from the flank or cap charges on the sides and your swords or, you know, it's just, Braver has a kiting army, so he'll just be kiting you the whole time. Braver. You done with that? Uh, okay, I thought you had more to say. Or it's actually a, a management thing, in my opinion. Like, you see where the two light calf, one Yari Sam and one Nodachi are in one group? Yes. When you move it, right? What, do you think about attacking it? Would you, Indy, would you actually attack that kind of group with your cat force? 
No, I mean, the Yari Samurai are there to back it up, so I can't really use my cav to hurt that because I know the Yari Samurai can just burst in there and take out any of my cav units that I send in. Yeah, so that gives me free reign for that whole area. Now, that's like that way I can just easily flank you. Blah, blah, blah. Now, you see the second group, the two Yari Cav? Next to your general, yeah, I see that. Yeah. I can actually chain my entire like pathway that way. Not only like it's uh, that one group is not pro by pro pro ugh, protected by the two light cav, it's also protected by the two air cav. Now I can also move the gun group, Magic Sam and the uh, Yari Sam and the uh, Nadachi. I can keep chaining it. That way, it's actually surrounding you, and I'm still keeping a what's the correct word for it? Good skirmish line, basically. So basically, when you see an army like this, the first thing you'd want to do is try to negate my matchlock advantage, right? Like you'd want to get rid of my range units so that I can't hurt your matchlock because mine are better, but there are ways to counteract my matchlock advantage, like using cab effectively, well, using meat shields effectively, stuff yeah. like that, right? I would rather like either use the bowgens to injure range, or just walk around you rather than you know use it trying to kill your. Matchlocks. Now that is important to note that what? you don't need you don't need a bow gen to deal no, with an army like this. Obviously, you like don't. you could use a leader gen, you could use a melee gen, but obviously yeah. when you have a different kind of gen, you, like you're gonna want to use it differently. Obviously, a leader gen, yeah, a leader gen would be good, except you don't want to get into a slugfest with me. My sword units are better than yours, so obviously Braver's army composition is not designed to attack me head on. What he wants to do is surround me and hit me from multiple flanks and get me get pretty into much traps. Yeah, get me into traps exactly. Make me push onto one certain group as you pull away from that group. Yeah. I get out of position and then you're able to hit my flank, hit my rear and basically get flanking shots off and basically just get me out of position. <clears throat> yeah. Pretty much. <clears throat> but the whole, whole whole idea is actually making use of multiple groups rather than having one whole army like yours. Yours looks like a one-celled army, basically. Yeah, and that's normally how I play, is that I'll have the, the two matchlocks up front and keep my guys compact, because I know that my swords can win in melee. So as long as I can get them into melee, that is very good. But, see, the problem with, like, a, I don't know, like, if a six-star or seven-star played against me, they're not going to have the veterans that I have. They're not going to have the general that I have. Well, they don't need the No, they don't, they don't need it. They don't need it, but... It helps. I mean, because like, if he, mo most people when they play Total War, well, they think of just keeping all their guys in one big group and just moving forward and then going into a melee fight and trying to take that. No, 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 no. That's just a misconception. I no, mean. no, it is. It is. But let me explain. That they, okay. they try to, they, they think that's what you should do. But when you're a lower ranked player, that isn't what you should be trying to do. See, the, pro the thing that happens to me is whenever I play, I mean, the games that I have the biggest issues with are when my opponent spreads out all over the field and gets me into traps and basically uses a lot of micro, a lot of different control groups like Braver has to get me out of position. And so as, as some of you guys might remember the battle that I battle replay that I posted a while back, uh, it was like Indie Pride Failure, or I can't remember what the, the name of the video was, but uh, my opponent used kind of strange tactics, like most what most people don't normally do, spread out all over, all over the field, brought a lot of cav, and got me surrounded, and almost ended up beating me, and he was a much lower level than I was. So if you can get your opponent out of position and use all these control groups and try to get onto someone's flank and just kind of surround them, you can really change the battle in your favor. So as a lower rank, you're going to have worse veterans probably. So you don't <coughs> want to just take a straight melee engagement head on. Like I said, what you want to do is surround them. And so like like boss, what would if you were in this situation right now and saw my army, like what would you try to do? What was the first thing you'd try to exploit? Your left flank. I'd harass your cav and your swords. Or actually, it would be your right flank, but from Braver's perspective, your left flank. I'd, I'd like move up my Yari Sam's and my uh, Nod and then Nodachi up. I'd uh, move the gun up, you know, take some pot shots. Uh, by the way, I have crazy people in my dorm, so just ignore them. Yeah, just ignore the crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> and, um,. Yeah, I just harass you, get you into traps, shoot a little part, and while I'm doing that over there, on the other side, I'd be moving up or like moving cab over, because hopefully I'm like hoping that maybe all of your uh, units or like your attention 
is paying attention to the part where, or like the flank where I started the attack or the uh, feint. Your guns are off fire, well, right? Yeah. So, so what kind of advantages do a lower ranked player have over someone like me? Do they have any advantages at all? Yeah. Um, uh, units. They can bring more units because their general costs less. No, 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 no. Yeah. The the max benefit comes when you're like rank seven, when you can get the the two plus two leader. I mean, morale for the leader gen. True. True. Like before rank seven, leader gens are kind of useless because you can't get the extra morale. So if you're before that, you should use a bow or a, a melee gen. They're much more useful. Especially bow gens are a lot more useful. Are they? I think they are because you can. Well, if you don't, if you don't buy into the stigma that bow, you know, of like kiting with it, then yeah, they'll be okay. Like you're at a disadvantage anyways because you have less morale. The the good thing about the bow gen is that you don't actually have to worry about gun calf. And then that is that is one thing, guys. If if you want to be able to compete against someone who's a much higher rank than you, you kind of can't buy into these stigmas that oh, kiting is bad. Oh, bringing a bow gen or a melee gen is bad because it's not true. It's just how you use them. Like and you might have to do things like kiting. Like braver and boss, they both are. A lot of the time, they'll kite you and they will kite you and they will kite you until they know that they can win. Te technically, a I would kite you while flanking you at the same time. Yeah, exactly. You, mm -hmm. you try to hit, you'd ba basically get me out of position, you'd shoot at my flanks, get me out of position, and then maybe bring your cav in. And that is one thing that I've noticed about your army setups that's not the case in this battle, is that you'll usually bring a lot of cav that makes me focus on that cav. And that's how you can bring in your other flanks in, because you can like harass my flank with that cav, kind of get me focused on them, and then hit me from the other side. Oh, that's only if you're like a melee gen, because if you're yeah. a melee gen, you Cav is more important. Well, you guys, you guys normally bring melee gens. I mean, lately you've been bringing bow gens, but like, let, let's think about about this from a a melee gen perspective, because I think most more people would be comfortable as a low rank bringing a melee gen than they would a bow gen. So let's talk about it from the melee gen perspective. You got a lot of restrictions as a melee gen compared to a bow gen. How so? Yeah, like bow, bow gens, you have to use a lot of micro, and you have to pay attention to where it is all the time, because like one light cap can kill a bow gen. You know, like a charge from like a yeah. You have to pay attention to it a lot. And melee gens, I guess, for uh, newer players, it'd be a lot better. But I think so too. With melee gens, you have to worry about guns more than anything. Anything with a gun, that'll destroy your melee gen. No, no, no. Even oh. if you had the to make worry about light cap, it's not that big of a deal. You have retainers that can you know ease it out. Like if you're a bow gen, you would want to use like live sock festivals that way and get the four speed upgrades. That way, you're always faster than their cav, no matter what. Yeah. Okay, well, actually, let's talk about that real quick. Let's talk about army composition uh, and uh, retainer setups for someone in your position. You're a six star, seven star, something like that. What would what would you want to bring to a normal battle? I mean, obviously, there, depending on the map, there are many variables that go into it. What is the kind of thing that you would want to bring to a battle? Obviously, you want to bring match locks. Match locks today are very important. You want to bring a balanced army, but like, what would you use as your core? Like, no dachis, katanas, and oh, why? That kind of thing. No dachis. I bring I bring level two no dachis because they have a pretty high attack. Like with Yagi, they have 19 attack. Um, retainers. I bring practice grounds, of course, because you should be bringing cav. Um, practice grounds. I be bringing Yagi. Um, Just a quick note: pr practice grounds gives plus two melee attack to all cavalry, so it's a great retainer. I always bring. And a Fuju cook, which is generally <laughs> useful because you... I call Fuju. That's fine. Thank you. All that. <laughs> anyways, yeah, I, I bring Fuju, 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 whatever you want to call it. Right. For the minus two melee attack to all sort of infantry, yeah, yes. I would bring that too. Uh, because, you know, you don't, you don't have many yeah, other no, no, no. Uh, decent retainers. Three retainers. I mean, retainers. Three retainers. Three retainers? Three retainers, and then level sense four. Then level ten's five. Yeah. If you're level four, then it, it depends on the map. Like, and it depends what changes you have. I'm just trying to think of the ones on the avatar map. Uh, livestock pestilence is also pretty good. Yamabushi, if you have that by that, then then that's good for maps with a lot of terrain or rivers. Uh, oh, by the way, um, Yamabushi guide. It makes you run faster in terrain, like a a lot faster, very noticeably faster. And Lifestyle Pestilence gives minus 10% of speed to the other enemy's cav, which is pretty good. 
Yeah, so those are all retainers that you'd maybe want to consider bringing. Uh, uh, one thing I do want to mention real quick, match locks are definitely one of those kind of units that even at low levels can completely change the course of a battle. And so, especially on a map like Rice Fields, but it really any map where there's not massive terrain, like obviously on Sakura Ridge, any uh, any ridge map where the, there's a huge hill in the middle, you might not want to bring match locks, but any map where there's significant portions of the map that are relatively flat, you're going to want to bring match locks and probably bring a lot of them because they're able, like, this is what, like, as you look at Braver's army, he has one, two, two match lock Ashigaru and a match lock Samurai. And even at low levels, these Three can completely like shred my sword units. Uh, and because he's able to get onto my flank and stuff with them, he can cause a ton of damage, and it's the morale penalty that's the biggest thing with match locks, is that if you can get an, a decent infantry engagement off and surround me and then get match lock flanking fire, that will route even my best sword units. Like, yeah, my guys have 25 attack, but if I'm surrounded and getting shot in the flank by matchlock fire, they're going to route just as easily as any other unit in the game. But what most, uh, like, players have to, like, what do you call it, worry about is actually management, in my opinion. Yeah, micro skill. is It's hard. It's, it, it's not really micro skill, it's actually macro skill. Macro. Okay, so and explain what you mean by you, that. Uh, you want to learn how to, like, efficiently use groups like shortcuts and you have to man M macro is more of like managing a lot and paying attention to a lot I guess. you're just so looking at the bigger picture right of like yeah game rather than the little you know movements of like a cav unit okay like, so, uh, so like you're you should okay when you're positioning okay like, like when braver was talking about earlier mm -hmm. when he was talking about kiting to an objective so he's trying to get you in a certain area like he kites you to where he wants you to go like, he's moving you so he can get that advantage, and he's controlling the battle. Like, little do you know, he's controlling the battle and where you're moving from, like, his uh, feints and his attacks on certain flanks to push you back or to make you come out. Like, there's a reason why you should always have a plan when you're playing a game. Like, never let someone else control you and move, and then you defend or, you know, you should be controlling the game. Try to control the game. That's, that's the main thing. In my opinion, like that's really important. I would completely agree with that. I've always found that if you're the one, not necessarily attack. Like, like when I say attacking, I don't mean blindly uh, rushing at the enemy. But yeah, I mean one, like shooting. And yeah, right. Yeah, like, like, yeah, <laughs> like basically, you <laughs> but but you want to be the one applying the pressure because then they have to react to you. And F Fish Sandwich Patrol is famous for saying this. He would say in like every other video, he'd be like, if you're the one attacking, they're the one on the back foot. So you're the one controlling the battle and c controlling the engagement, and so they have to react to everything you do, and that's hard. Personally, that's harder, I think, to react to what someone's doing than to force them to do something. Yeah. No. Well. <laughs> no. All right, braver. <laughs> All right. Tell us why we're wrong, yeah, braver. Tell us why I'm wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> it's easier to just keep going. Like, uh, for instance, you know, uh, Tree's army. Well, how it's all like spears and stuff. You can just keep going and never stop. And you can still catch the kiter easily. Okay. Sure. But like, if, you're playing like, tree, if you're playing Sir Tree of Arbor, you should be bringing a counter army to him. No, no, I don't mean just Sir Tree of Arbor. We don't I mean, have, if, we like, don't have back to get... then, we're like the Naggies. Like, you can just spam, like, Nagatons easily and Yari Ash and Naggy Sams. Like, I would actually lose to, like, Prussian Prince if he just kept running forward. We, I don't think we have to get that specific into like one person. I'm talking about the overall. No, no, it, it, was, it was overall it, like I couldn't. Oh, I I would almost lose to like many people just because that tactic would work. Because there was like uh like for instance like DD. That tactic almost worked until I figured out what to do. What tactic? Nagi spam. Like they would just keep moving oh, forward. But... Yeah, they just move forward and like if you're in a one v one is easier to manage. But but we're talking about today's today's army combat, it's today's still game. Possible. It's just the way it is, but I, what effect. would what would you do though? Like that's what I'm saying. Is like what would you, how would you counter an army like that? To oh, from a, just like a rush army where they just move yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah, because they. I mean, that, that's, today today that's what people are doing today. Yeah, I know. People don't bring bring bows anymore. You'll you'll often see people not bring matchlocks, which I think is dumb. I think you should always bring matchlocks in a balanced army. So and then that's brings, what that's one reason why I think my army is so difficult to beat is that it has a strong sword core, 
yeah, and it has pretty decent cav, but it has the match locks and it's balanced. There's no, there's it's hard to find a weak spot unless you're just gonna micro a lot and just yeah do do the kind of tactic that you guys do right, right, in terms of uh, shooting from multiple flanks and stuff. For like, you see the three match lock group right here at the side. Uh, give me a because madness needs to find it. So explain what units are in it so you can find it. The three match lock ash, the two no nodachis, and then one Yarsam. Sam. It's right in front of your army, buddy. Yeah. You know that one. You want to actually create like a artificial choke point for yourself. Like, let's say, uh, which group would you attack first, uh, Indy? If I was, if I was fighting you. Yeah. I would go for your melee. Wh whichever one has which the. Which group? Just the which melee group? So probably, probably the one in front of me, the Yari Sam, the Nodachi, and. All right. So let's say I move that group back, right? Then I move one group to the side. What then? How would you react? I would probably just keep singling that out and then use my cab. If like if you wanted to get your cab on my flank, then I would keep. Yeah, but there's a gun, well, two guns actually pointing at that direction. That what do you call it? General surface, general direction. What are you gonna do now? Uh, Let's just pretend he has cab around that area. Then I'm gonna have my cab around that area. <laughs> Why would I let his cab get there? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, how, how about how about I do what I would do probably do in this situation, then you kind of respond to it, and then let's just see what happens. Wrong group, damn it. <laughs> and if this ends up looking completely stupid, we might just cut it out. But I mean, well, because this is new. Again, we haven't done anything like this before. This kind of a roundtable discussion, and I don't know what's gonna happen at this point. But Andy, wrong, wrong direction you're looking at. <laughs> no, I I said that I was gonna go for your no doubt, Yari Sam. No, wrong one. The other one. What? <laughs> The other oh, one. oh, that's where you have three. <laughs> well, that wasn't the one that I was going to go for, but <laughs> uh, I can go for that. Well, well, let's just say you go for the one with the three guns. Like, it'll be difficult to attack. You're going to get shot at from, like, all corners, yeah. and, let's, and, like, one of your swords is going to be gone and, and do nothing, you know? So you just have to make little traps. Hopefully, it, it depends who you're playing against. So if you're playing against a really, really good player, then most likely it's not going to fall for it. Fall oh, for it. But if you're playing like against, longest? like... Not it's easier to go against him. They don't know who Lamadis is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is an overall thing. We're not trying to get super specific here. We're talking about. Over yeah. What, what I mean is, if he's using like Gary Sam's mostly, and you're you still using your swords, you can actually destroy a really good anti uh, infantry army. Yeah, especially uh, Nog Sams too. Like if you if you run a Nog Sam against guns, they're gonna get destroyed and wasted like for a thousand Koku. I'm talking about high level Nog Sams. Well, any Nog Sams will get destroyed against a gun army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's if, if, if like let's say your opponent brings like infantry mass, you bring like three, four guns, then it's gone. Like if you if you kite efficiently and if you play efficiently, destroy all of his cav. Uh, side charges to slow up his infantry so you can get some volleys off. Then you're you practically won. Yeah, and that that probably will be another thing. Let me let me just Raver, talk about how great terrain is and how important yeah, it is that, in game. That is some one thing that we should mention for some sure. Some people seem to like not care about terrain and think it's used in like pointless. Terrain I sucks know. ass if it's like flat. <laughs> flat? flat? Flat is flat. It's just a bit. Like, terrain if there's like like hills, let's say what's a good map? Um, saga. Like Saga Saga River, how there's water, there's hills. Uh, there's forest like that map is great for someone um, like a newer player because you can use the terrain to your advantage against their uh, OP rushes. That's if they have like that no guide. Yeah, you know, but you got or not, they can they can they can uh, manipulate the terrain to their advantage. Yeah, oh, that's true. And 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 that's what that's really important. Terrain is super important for a couple of reasons. One. As a newer player, if you can get someone, because a lot of high level, maybe not high level players, but higher ranked players, like level 10, like 10 stars, they bring rush armies. That's just what is, that's what happens nowadays is people bring rush armies. So if you can say, get your match locks position on top of a hill and then make him run up that hill to attack you, having that uphill advantage is huge. Even if you have worse sword units or worse melee units, you can kill better sword units because you have the advantage of a downhill charge and there uh, is a hidden morale penalty not necessarily braver i'm just saying like <laughs> you don't have to be the contrarian all the time bro <laughs> no, i was but, gonna say that like 
the downhill charge, that's a myth. <laughs> It, 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 but there, there's a morale penalty for fighting. You get a morale right? penalty, a but, morale you know, penalty, but the morale penalty doesn't really help. It disappears I, after. Have a while. you seen the battle I played with Agony Twitchy, where he charged me uphill? He had really good units, and then they all mass routed because he was fighting uphill. It happens. I'm not saying it happens he, all the time. He's a little girl. Okay. <laughs> it, it doesn't happen all the time, but it, there is a hidden morale penalty in the game. I've yeah, seen it work uh, many times. I know. Yeah. No, it does show if you like secure on the hill. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Plus six morale. Oh, six. I don't mind. It's plus six. Charging is plus eight. But that regardless, there's the other thing that you want to use in terms of terrain is that you can mani manipulate it. Like a lot of people don't zoom down and look at the terrain when they're using match locks. So yeah. obviously it doesn't like, matter on like a map like Rice Field because it's all flat. But on maps, I don't know, like Heat of Mountains that look flat, but if you actually zoom down and look, there are lots of line of sight issues. You can manipulate players who aren't paying attention to that and put your guys in a position to fire when their guys aren't or when they're in a bad position. So it's stuff like that, using hills to your advantage, using line of sight to your advantage, that you should probably focus on because that can really turn a battle in your favor if you use it correctly. Uh, well, that's yeah. that's unfair way of saying that, actually. Like, rice fields it actually has some terrain advantage. Like, if you notice the scrubs. Yeah. Like, you in can actually... It, uh, if I was pulling back, right, but I had, like, a bunch of men there before, I'd actually leave, like, one match lock there, standing. That way it would go hiding. And you would think that, oh, I just let you have that. That way I can get a free shot off. If you get close to it. Yeah. There aren't many maps on this game, though, that have scrub areas like this, though. In fact, I, Rice Fields might sure. be one of the only ones. I think it is the only one. Yeah. Uh, Lowlands had one. Obviously, too. the same concept applies to woods, though, and obviously there are plenty of maps that have woods on the game. But otherwise, you wouldn't rely on terrain to, like, slow down the other person while you, like, run away. If they can't catch you, they can't kick your ass. Yeah. And basically, that's the mantra. <laughs> that's, that's the mantra of a of a newer player who has worse veterans is that you don't want to enter that melee engagement. So use the range units to your advantage. Make sure you skirmish as much as you possibly can before you go into a melee engagement. Yeah. And don't bring bows unless it's a daiku. Those yeah. If if you're if you're going today in today's game, there there are some, certain exceptions where you can bring. A bow and it will work really effectively. But oh, if I'm just thinking against like really good players, like maybe against like some lesser players, it'd work, you know. But against the well, higher up players, and don't bring a bow unless it's a daiku. I, I think this will be more because how often do you run into super high level players? I would say that hmm. if if you're going to bring a bow, you should first get 200 range on it. I think I don't think 175 cuts it on any bow unit. Uh, for those of you who don't know, 175 range is the base range for the bow monks and yeah for the bow monks and the daikyu samurai so if you upgrade that to increase range at level five and get it to 200 range that really makes it much more effective unit and uh, maybe a couple upgrades what would you say upgrades would be good for maybe just reload skill reload accuracy i say bow damage everyone disagrees with me but i don't care bow damage at least one in bow damage i just get two accuracy and leave my Daikyu like that. Uh, oh, I, it's really cheap. If you're going to bring a bow, though, bring one. And that's it. And skirmish effectively with it. As in, use yeah, your bow, like, shoot, take out really important targets, actually, and then wait, run away. Why am I talking about bows when I can use a fucking fire rocket? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's another thing. <laughs> fire rockets are very effective they against actually melee bomb armies. Like, yeah. I would use fire rockets, actually, if you are lower level. They you, used to be really them. bad. They're extremely accurate now, though. You can... Well, it's not extremely accurate. Again, they're accurate enough, you know. Like especially against an army like like uh, Indies, uh, not the greatest. Uh, uh, the I, I scared example. him shitless one time. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. There's a big scare tactic because one, it can gen snipe very easily. Two, it can destroy melee blobs, as some of you guys have, might have seen in that cinematic we posted. I got 200 kills in one volley with a fire rocket. Like they can do a lot of damage now. Were you yeah. using Tim's one? Uh, yeah, that was well. Tim was in that replay. I don't. It was yeah, me. Yeah, like, it was in Saga River. No, not Saga River. No. Uh, Riku, Riku, Riku Crossing. Crossing, yeah. Yeah, Riku. that one. Yeah, I was there that time. <laughs> I was there. Right. You're cool. All right. Well, I don't want to make this video last too much longer. We're going to. I really. I want to kind of make this kind of thing a, a staple of the channel because I think it's interesting. And though we might have rambled a crap load, I think there are some things that you guys could have taken away from this video. Um, 
but and we're probably gonna do this more often but I don't want to make this like a two hour long video so if you guys have any last thoughts feel free to give them now and uh, all right sure yeah learn to change your keys like you want to learn how to use the select general and zoom into him key that way that's like a rand like a a group that you can actually use without using like your numpad what yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> it's witchcraft, okay, God. No, no, okay, actually, real quick, talk about grouping. Talk about when you make a group. No, no, what that. I mean is you want to learn how to select your general and zoom up to him, zoom to him instantly by pressing one button. But why? So, like, let's say if you're, like, looking at a different part of the map and you want to go to the other side really quickly rather than, um, you know, move. Because <laughs> uh, sometimes the map's really, s or the camera's really slow. Then, you know, that's a good way to do it. No, it uh, also gives you a different point. vantage point. That way you actually see, like, uh, you, you see my general, right? Yes. From my vantage point from there, I can actually see all my men. So if you have a different camera view, you can actually use that to your advantage without actually having moving to the the other side of the map to control those units. Huh. Are you done? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and probably <laughs> keys. <laughs> Anyways, um, well, the what? the best thing is get destroyed a lot. What? Good yes. Players. No. Oh, yeah. Practice. Practice. Like and save the players. replays. Save the replays. Watch the replays. Go from go to your opponent's viewpoint. And watch the game from his viewpoint, and then look and see what they're doing, and like why they're doing. Rationalize his choices. That's what I used to do to get better, and to like, you know, check some things out. Like, like that's a really good way to do it. Um, I completely agree with that. Me, no, me. no, it'll be much better if they just shut like, the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try not to cuss, but you're fucking pissing me off. <laughs> anyway, we have to argue with everything that we've said. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's just who he is. <laughs> Anyways, um. Also, uh, I would say join a clan exactly, but if you find, if you find a group of people by someone, yeah, yeah, find a group of people to play with. Find some, you know, add some people who are skilled. You know, ask them questions. Ask them, <laughs> ask the cool kids. You know, ask ask them like, how do you do this? Like, can you help me out? Help me out with the veterans or whatever. Just you know, just ask. Yeah, like that. That helped. A, that helped a lot. Like when I started doing that when I was a new. I, I would I say that up. I was like an average, probably maybe a little bit above average player yeah. when I started playing yeah. with the RTK guys. And then, I don't know, after like three or four months of playing with them, I would say that I got a lot better. And I mean, we all did. Like, we just by beating up, beating the crap out of each other and having a bunch of replays, just watching those and then talking to each other about it and just playing a bunch of 2v2s, 3v3s, 1v1s, and maybe even entering some tournaments, which I think you guys should definitely do. I think you can learn a lot from tournament games. And see what people do, and maybe try right. to play that. Uh, you can get a lot better. Mm, tournament games, I, I don't know. But Fall of Samurai, I wouldn't really watch those too much. Maybe not. They're Fall usually Samurai. fucking boring. The Fall of Samurai, everyone does the same thing. They just spam line and OP cap. It's it, really I mean, it, it depends on who you're asking, who the opinion is. That, that, that we can get into that later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't do that. Watch my videos. I'm I would great. say that I would say that playing <laughs> playing with high level players, getting a group of people that you can play with regularly, is really important because playing yep. battleless games can just help you learn so much so fast. Yep, true. By the way, want to see the little what you call it, rapid advance glitch? No, I think we're gonna end the video here. <laughs> I think we're gonna end the video here. And uh, if you guys like this kind of thing, if you want to kill that great guard, Braver, be quiet, please. <laughs> Um, if you guys want to hear more, learn more, I, I realize that we were kind of a little bit rambling during this, but I think we did say some things that might help you a little bit, but uh, if not, let us know. Let us know what you guys want to learn about, and we can maybe help you out and make some more videos on th from this kind of perspective. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and we will talk to you later. See ya. Look at that, see, look at that, yeah, Sam. So beautiful. And one thing that I forgot to mention during the last video that I kind of want to add on to the end real quick here. Uh, is is grouping army grouping and I think this is actually really important because the way you set up your army can definitely decrease the amount of micro that you have to do uh, and one one of the ways that I minimize that is obviously I have the match locks up front as you can see and they have the 125 range the long range which is very good but I have spears backing them up 
And what that does for me right at the start is that cavalry straight at the beginning cannot go up the middle. And this might sound obvious, but obviously getting cav charged into the front of your lines is one of the easiest way to lose. Like if you get, if, if they get cavalry free into your infantry and you have swords, you're going to be in big trouble just automatically off the bat. Like that's pretty obvious. So what I'll do is if I see an enemy that's coming at me, whether it's cav or whether it's an infantry engagement, and this is normally what I do with an infantry engagement, is if I see a rush army coming at me, I'll get a couple volleys off with my matchlocks, and then when that army is close to me, as you can see with uh, Braver's Yari hand that's coming up, I'll get a volley off, yeah, you can see that, and then I'll spear wall with both my Yari Ashigaru up front. And Yari Ashigaru, even at low levels in spear wall, can be very effective. If you back them up with the swords, they can actually do quite a bit of damage considering their cost. So I'll bring my matchlocks back and set them up either on the flanks or behind my men depending what's happening. If they have a lot of free cav and they have the cav advantage, then I will not end up... Why is that Yari Samurai already wavering? <laughs> um, <laughs> Roshan. Yeah, I guess. Um, if they have a lot of free cav and they have the cav advantage, then I'm probably going to want to keep them close to my lines and maybe turn them around onto the flanks so that uh, if any cav comes up behind, they'll run straight into matchlock fire. Uh, but anyway, regardless of that, I'll have my Yara Shigaru up front in Spear Wall to take the brunt of any charge, and then I'll send my Naginata attendants up front. Naginata attendants up front aren't always the best idea. If you send them in unsupported and they route, they'll give a morale penalty if they run by all of your guys, your sword units that enter melee after, and if they route, they might give a little bit of a morale penalty. So with stacking, if a morale penalty stack, including the friendlies routing, which are your Naginata attendants routing, that can be bad sometimes, but generally I like to have 99 attendants up front because number one, they absorb the charge, and number two, they deter cavalry from coming up the middle. So they'll have the spear walls up front and then a layer of 99 attendants in between, and then my sword units following up. I don't generally care about the charge. In today's game, you're not generally going to get a free charge off into a melee unit or a good melee unit. Because, you should try. Well, you should try, but it doesn't always happen because people meet shield with 99 attendance, and it doesn't always just it just doesn't always work out like that. So I don't bank on getting the charge. It's good to, but it doesn't always happen. So then, w once I send my 99 attendance forward, I'll try to fan out. Depending what happens, I'll try to fan out and send my swords maybe spread out a little bit. Have two or so in the middle, and then maybe have the rest kind of flanking a little bit, get on the edge, and then obviously hit Rally, inspire one unit, and go straight into stand and fight. And then depending on how the battle progresses, I'll maybe either keep my matchlocks defending my rear, or move them out to the flanks to try to get flanking shots off. And obviously that all depends on whether I won the cav fight, that kind of thing. That's kind of the general process that I go through when an enemy army is coming at me. It doesn't always work. Obviously, there are exceptions, and like if your your opponent is bringing a very strange army setup, that kind of thing. But in a normal rush army, that's kind of kind of the strategy that I go through. Obviously, then I'll get my cavalry on the flanks, and if I have better cavalry than him, what I'll do is I'll push that cavalry advantage, try to get his cav off the field, and then come in from the rear. And then if I don't have the cavalry advantage. I will keep my cav close to my lines so that they can just block charges from the enemy cavalry. And that's all things that you have to gauge. Actually, one last thing that I forgot to mention that is super important and I really think you need to do this is if you go into options, you can turn unit cards on. Uh, does anyone remember the exact process you have to go through to turn unit cards options, on? Options, battle, battle interface, interface, unit card, always. Yeah, unit card. Or floating flag. Or f no, f unit info always. Unit info always. Turn that to always, because if it's not on always, when you mouse over an enemy unit, you can't see their stats, which is bad. You always want to be able to see an enemy unit's stats, because that will let you know if an infantry engagement is worth taking or not. Yeah, like if you see someone with like all level 9 units, but like he just upgraded like fatigue resistance and speed and like random upgrades and and you can enter a melee engagement. You shouldn't be too scared. Yeah, you yeah. shouldn't be too scared of it. But, but if, if you zoom like... down and look at your guys and you have 17 attack katanas and he has 25 attack nodachis, you're not gonna want to enter that melee fight until you either get cav into his flank or rear or shoot them down with matchlocks or basically whittle them down. 
So it's one of those things that you want to be able to have those unit cards on so that you can tell. And it's also important in like a range fight, like match locks. Like I have the 125 range. Braver doesn't. He has 100 range. So he doesn't want to just run his match locks forward and let them get shot, obviously. So by looking and mousing over my units and seeing what kind of range they have, he can not enter that melee, that uh, that shooting engagement and put them in a better position where they can be more effective. So that was all I wanted to add to the end of that uh, replay. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll try to bring you more of this content in the future if you like it. So hope you enjoyed, and I will talk to you later. See you guys.